had a long four days sitting in that tent. So my body honestly feels so tired. I'm just laying there waiting for the storm to kind of break. But now that we are moving, I feel much better. Next, next guy's about to land. We're about to get this hunt going. Let's keep going from there. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. They sing on a sleepless night. Try to catch me howling at the moon. What's going through my mind when uh, I'm getting a hunter that I haven't met before or a hunter period? I'm just racking my brain, thinking about, hey, what can I do to make it better? But it's honestly pretty chill. I, I try not to get stressed out about things. I know what I need to do to perform and whether that person is an experienced hunter or this is his first hunt he ever did in his life. Honestly, it doesn't change my thought process because I don't know the what ifs. So if it's somebody I know, I kind of know what to expect. If it's somebody I don't, I can't control the information. I don't know until it comes up. I like to keep it pretty calm. and. When it's time to go kill, I go kill. And when it's time to relax, I, I relax. Spotless. The feeling before the hunt, has it changed? Yeah, I think it has. When you do stuff, you there's a level of evolution that comes with that. You do it more, the better you get. The more you, more experiences I have, the more that you know what's coming. Is it a grizzly bear hunt? Is it a sheep hunt? Is it a goat hunt? Moose hunt? You do it enough times, you have those base level what ifs answered. You know what to expect in some cases. But the beautiful thing about Mother Nature, about Alaska, about any backcountry hunting, is that I tell you what, Mother Nature has a cold ball ready to throw at you at any time, and you better be ready to deal with it. Like you can't call in backup, you can't call in help. It's it's on you to make sure it happens. So uh, yeah, I love to chase the unknown, and Mother Nature definitely gives me plenty of it. Yeah, he's at the at the very ridge, like the far ridge. I think it. Hang on, I see. I got him. I think that's him. It was just off of the edge that way. We'd have to get way closer to even try to shoot. But let's, let's get to that little edge right there and then see what we see. It's going to get us closer. We just need that bear to show itself again. It was over there where I last where I seen it for a second. We gotta do two things before we go down and try to kill it. I gotta make sure it's a, a black bear one because there's some dark brown bears and then that doesn't have any cubs with it. Look just to the left of where those two come together as a, as a bee. You'll see them there. We might just go after him since he's still grazing. It's a mile and a half away. If we hit that ridge, we can make it there pretty quick. It is 6:35. We got, we got to hustle. So we got, a, we got a black bear over there. He's about 1,900 yards away. It's mainly down here, but we got to hustle to go get him killed. And now uh, we're gonna be walking back probably at night. To be honest, time we get him skinned out, or we can make it. Make a loop back and skin him out in the morning. An hour and a half to get it dead. We might be able to get him done. 
night or might just have to head back, come get him in the morning. He's 825. He's 825. He's straight across from us. He's not a monster up there, but it's the only one we've seen. Be yeah. cool. Yeah. Just really take your time and find the foot placement. We're gonna hit this line right here, zigzag, zigzag down, and then we're gonna have to pick away through those bushes, which is gonna suck. But then once we get across there, that should just be up and hit a few stairs right there, we're good. Just watch yourself on this stuff. I do think possibly the best move is coming back tomorrow. Because getting back up this, it's we're gonna kill him 45 minutes before dark. And that gives us, we would have to leave him and come back. Yeah. And period, be hiking at night. And what we did is a long ways to walk, but it wasn't, it wasn't kill or well, we can't do it again easy tomorrow. But if we walk back tonight, we'll probably end up spending the night outside. Cause getting back to the is asking for it to bump into a grizzly. You can't see. Are you can you you think you can do it again tomorrow? Yeah. Leave him hanging. Yeah. I think we go up and hunt our way back slowly. And maybe we spot another one that we don't have to because this stuff, I've done it before and I've spent the night half freezing my ass off for a client before because you can't yeah no it's gonna be miserable because going because what it is you go down with the grain and you go up against the grain so it's pushing you it's this yeah, well, let's go back and try to let's let's slowly go back and hunt our way back there's no reason why we can't spot another one to go kill tonight and yeah, i hate doing this because that, that's gonna be good. he's get, time we get to there, he's gonna be up top. Yeah, and, and not even have a shot from up there. And I can't tell you how much is, you can ask Oscar and it kills me. Usually I go to the end, but I think going to the end on this one is asking for, yeah, asking for a miserable night at least. Yeah. Because hunting is so challenging, it, it gives me something to chase, something to test myself to try to make myself better. And uh, if hunting didn't do that for me, I don't know if I can continue. I wouldn't continue to do it. I would find something that would challenge me in the same manner. But since it's so challenging and I have to prove myself every day, it's like, okay, either the weather sucks or I, we just got an animal and I got to pack out a lot of meat. Okay, mental challenge, physical challenge, it's got it all. And then it's got the game aspect. Now I got to try to outsmart the animal. And if there's a, a hunter involved that's hunting with me, now I got to figure out how to motivate him as well. So yeah, I, I wouldn't if it wasn't challenging. So that's why I love it, because it is. Yeah, we we'll have to get a smoke and cure tomorrow. Yeah. The fog 
can be very disoriented because it takes away all your points. Even when it's dark, like pitch black, it's not that bad because you can see the sky. You know what way is what. And the fog takes all that away, like all of it. No visual, you have no way which way north and south is unless you have a compass or GPS. So like you have to have a compass or GPS on you because if you don't, you are dead in the water. You don't know which way is up and which way is down. Everything starts looking the same. You can barely see 10 feet in front of you. You're like, well, crap. It's totally disorienting. This is coming from a guy that's, I can find my way out of like anything type of deal. So it's, it's really, you gotta really respect the clouds because they will mess you up. I was scared of a lot of things when I was a kid. Uh, I guess it, the unknown and what lies in the dark and what could be there is what would scare me. I've always been a person that feels a lot of things. So when I was a kid, I watched this Scooby-Doo thing and it really messed with my head. I was probably too young to watch it or something. And they were chasing this blue looking guy that had a streak off the back of his head. And I remember like him looking back and I swear he was looking at me like this evil look in his eye. And that just really bugged me for the longest time. I was, I was scared of the dark. I wouldn't go, I, I would go, I, I even couldn't be alone. I was scared to go into a house by myself. So I always felt like whatever that monster was, was in the dark waiting for me. And it took a long time to flip that switch off. I don't know exactly what it was that flipped it off, but I kind of got sick of being afraid of things. So it's important to understand is that I don't think fear ever leaves you. You just become much stronger in dealing with it. Probably one of the reasons why I, I take so much to like martial arts and fighting and shooting and being strong because I know <laughs> it's gonna sound really silly, but if that blue man ever pops up in the dark, I'm gonna kill him. Keep your head cool. Whatever happens, deal with it. It's better to find out what's in the unknown than to be afraid of it. Most of the time that monster that lies in the dark well, he's not as scary when he's in the light. Face that dragon that you're afraid of. If he kills you, at least you wasn't afraid. But, who knows? You might just kill him. Straight off the barren ocean and it's sweeping, sweeping across this ground. Winter is coming and it's coming fast and it is cold. Whew. Here we go though. Right here. I don't think it's a male. I don't see that. Right. But straight off. Look straight. See that little knob? That's the farthest knob of Oval. Just the look at that. On the other side? See so yeah, the crosshairs? Yep. No, this ridge. Yep. The crosshairs that go to that. Yep. Look at the knob that's kind of to, to the left of that crosshair. Let's just keep, he's gonna walk his way this way. Yeah. Let's keep angling our way around and walk to get up on that knob where we can see this bowl in here. Okay. And we'll, we'll keep tracking him. The wind's not gonna blow him out. It's falling like that. Just, like, lay down on the pack. Yep. As long as we don't move, he's, he's going to come check us out. The curious is all get out. How confident are you, Ike? How far? Uh, with this, I probably wouldn't want to go more than two, three hundred. He's coming over here. Or trotting away. Yeah. All right, hang on. Good. He's a boy, you can kill him. 150. Get 
me, so baby! Oh, get down! <laughs> That's it. Honey, honey. Honey, honey. There you go, honey. So we did a live dance. We created it. Together. You go close. Close. Out. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Oh, gosh. Good job, man. I'm proud of you. Let's go get our hands on. Let's go. Come on, man. Yeah, that bad boy. Yeah. We got it. Well, I think it's important to do difficult things because stagnation is damnation. I mean, if all you ever do is live inside your comfort zone, no growth ever happens. And I think growth is important to have a to have a quality life because if all you if all you're doing is playing inside the box that say it's society put around you, you never get to test your true limits. So you never find out what what your God given gifts will to impact this world was. Those those gifts are elusive, and you have to <laughs> you gotta hunt them down. It's like literally a prey. So anything that you can do to challenge yourself to to expose those gifts because one thing i've noticed is we don't as humans we don't know ourselves very well like barely at all like i don't know myself well i'm working on understanding the way i think more every day so those those difficult choices when it's like hey i can give up or i can keep pushing it it opens up it cracks new doors that you never look behind in your brain and now that you can peek behind those now you can start to understand that better we walk the two miles or three miles i forget how far it was over to check that spot well if there was nothing there then we would have known okay nothing there cool we, we tried but there was something there so awesome and i think it's important to realize that out of those gut feelings they probably only pan out 20 percent of the time and there's 80 percent of the time where they don't pan out but those 20 percent times where they do pan out that makes you look like a stud and if you never went and did those 80 failed attempts, then then you never would have hit the home run. It's kind of just like the, there's a lot of famous baseball players that struck out a crap ton, but they're also the lead leaders in home runs. And everybody thinks they're the boss. That's who, that's who uh, everyone wants a baseball card because they're willing to swing at that ball very hard. And that's what propels them to the top. So you got to be, you got to be willing to fail and fail often. Because if you don't, then you're not putting yourself out there to hit those home runs, and you got to.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get out of the video? <laughs> <laughs>